Hi, Shay Given here. You're watching Irish Football Fan TV. Hello and welcome back to Irish Football Fan TV. I'm here with Bohemian striker Dini Corcoran and we're going to get uh, straight down to it. Hashtag Ask Dini. Dini, thanks very much for coming on, first no of water, all. No water, no water, I Um I suppose we get straight into it. Um, Ask Dahi Oli asks, do you now realise that there's no home like Daily Mount and the Bowes family? Yeah, I do realise that now after going to a few different clubs, Sligo, Pats and a few before that. But uh, yeah, there's definitely something special about Bowes and, and Daily Mount and I, I, I realise that now after all these years, yeah. Oh, I there you are, Dahi now, I hope you're happy with that one. Um, Georgie112233 asks, who was the worst driver in the car school last year? Um, well, that's Georgie Point, and so there's myself, Wardy, Georgie, and Kieran O'Connor in a car. Me and Wardy were definitely the best driver, so it wasn't either of us. Between them two, I'd say Kieran O'Connor was the worst. Definitely a, near, a few near crashes with him, and then George is closely second. He was a few scares with him as well. So, so there's no actual crashes. No actual crashes. You went the whole season with no crashes. Oh, no so injuries. Don't yeah. No, no, we don't okay. <laughs> but a few scares with Kieran. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Brilliant. Um, okay. Uh, at G underscore Howie, I think it's Howie. Uh, Ask your favorite Bose goal ever. Um, Doesn't have to be from this season. Yeah, no. I, it is this season there's two this season the one against Drogheda away I like that one because it was so unlike me it was like 30 yards or whatever and that's not me at all I, I rarely score outside the box so I liked that one and then of course the one in Tala the winner in Tala was the, the occasion was definitely the best so uh, yeah that's definitely my favourite goal the one in Tala ok yeah definitely Robert's fans look away now <laughs> <laughs> um, at finger twitching asks who created the most opportunities for you uh, the season just gone last season? Uh, I'm already, I'd say definitely. Paddy Kavanagh was very good now, I'd say. He created a lot, good few assists from him. Izzy, when he came back in the squad, same as again, he was on the right wing, he a lot of cross into the box, but already had that bit of magic. I think we had a on the same wavelength kind of. Good understanding. He, yeah, good understanding together, so I definitely, definitely say it's Wardy, yeah. Perfect. Um, at Anthony underscore Apton asks uh, I think you, you know this one uh, yeah, will he yeah. ever get his LinkedIn, pro LinkedIn profile going yeah he's always on to me. He's, he started a programme within the club now trying to help the, the football players get jobs you know and, uh, <laughs> he's told me to get me he's trying to sort out like interviews and stuff with companies and he told me to get my LinkedIn profile sorted and I got it up and running I don't really understand the LinkedIn to yeah. be honest with you so it's up and running and he keep keeps getting on to me about improving or making it better so I don't know what, how to do it or anything but I'll, I'll get it up and running yeah, give me a password yeah exactly <laughs> you can do it for me if you want but I'll get it sorted soon yeah <laughs> there you are Anthony um, at White Aaron asks uh, you've already answered this one but uh, favourite goal and match this season yeah the Tala the goal and Tala and then the match because the way it went, we went one nil up through Izzy, and then they equalised soon after. And you're thinking, oh, here we go, like, but um, yeah, it was a great, great match, and to get the winner and win two one was, yeah. It's what's what's the uh, atmosphere like at the at those games? Ah, it's class. It's it's brilliant. Like you can feel the kind of tension in this now, whether it's in Daily Mount or Tala, <coughs> the fans you can kind of sense the hatred between them and all. And there yeah. is that extra boy to the games and. And yeah, to get to get the winner out there in Tal it was, was special and that's something I'll never forget. Yeah. All right. Um James Cronin says, uh, who is the most underrated player you played against and why? Hmm. That's a good question that. Um most underrated player played against. I don't know, that's a tough one. I could say the most underrated player I played with was Keith Buckley and I played against him this year so you could say that I, I, I rate him very highly now because I've obviously seen him in training and stuff and I could say him because we it's played a, against a, him this year it's one of those things I was doing is a, a lot of stuff actually goes unnoticed to the like, yeah. untrained eyes so exactly yeah exactly like yeah I, I'd, I'd notice things that maybe the fans wouldn't about Bucko and things that I loved about him as a player so I think he's definitely the most underrated I've 
It's kind of like that with managers see things in, in certain players that yeah, fans ex- wouldn't exactly, see. Yeah, I mean? exactly. Dif- different perspectives, kind of, isn't it? So, yeah, he, I think he's a very good player. I, I think he's very underrated in the league, so I'll say him. All right. Um, Alex O'Brien, uh, what are your goals for uh, 2018 next season? Um, um, I suppose just to kind of pick up where I left off, keep scoring goals, and if I can obviously better the last season, next season, if you get me so. Yeah. I got 17 goals this year so if we can get better than that again that's not a bad return not a bad it's not a bad season yeah it would be great to win something as well maybe going to go cup run or I think winning the league might be a bit out of our reach but uh, yeah the goal is to have another good season plenty of goals and hopefully a bit of silverware with balls um, uh, a, couple, a couple of people actually asked this question uh, did you follow the league of, league of Ireland as a kid and if so who did you support uh, not really I didn't I went to a few games now just because more so my friends were fans of the league, so I went with them. Went to a few Shells games, went through a period of Shells games, mm, and me too. Actually, actually Rovers games, believe it or not. Shamrock Rovers, I think the Bowers fans won't like saying that, but uh, no, I never really was a, a keen supporter of any club, I just kind of went along with my mates, so that's it. Uh. Perfect. Uh, best manager you've had in your career? You don't have to say the one that you currently have. Uh, if he well, is, then yeah. Yeah, no, there's two. There is. I think Key Long is actually one of them, and I'm not just saying that because he is. But I think the relationship we have, kind of on and off the pitch, I get along with him as a person as well as a manager. You know what I mean? And I think he, not just me. I think he's a great manager for everyone. He's great man management, and and um, he's kind of a good mix of like being one of the lads and being our manager. You know what I mean? You don't yeah, want the manager who. Yeah, there's a balance there. You can have the crack with him. But then at the same time, when he's serious, he's, he gets the respect from the players, you know what I mean? Yeah. So definitely him and Mickey Adams. I didn't have him for long now at Sligo, but Mickey Adams, who managed in the Premiership, he, he was the same. When yeah, he Leicester, came, wasn't he? In Coventry. Leicester, yeah. Because yeah, yeah. when he came into Sligo, it was, it was a bad dressing room at that time. We weren't playing as well as we should and stuff. Things were down, conference was low. And he just changed that all. He got a, feel, a good feel to the dressing room. Him and the coach, you know, the two of them together worked very well. And he, yeah, he just got togetherness back in the dressing room, and 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 of course the way he, the, the training and stuff was was top notch, and his his professionalism, you know. So I think I definitely learned a few things from him, even though it was only I think two months he was there. You could see, yeah, could tell how he's managed like the Premiership. Yeah, 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 kind of his his, his uh, professionalism, like I said, and his, he never let your standards drop. You know, he'd always make sure your your performance up. So. Yeah, I'd say them two now. Them two stick out in my career. Yeah. yeah. Well, you're not finished kind of playing with Keith as well. Yeah, so. exactly. So, yeah. so it's a probably a better question to ask uh, maybe at the end of your career. Maybe. <laughs> yeah, maybe. I'll, I'll be changed to my opinions then. But, no. um, the toughest defender you've came up across? Um, I think that's going to be ever. Yeah, there's two, I think, within the league. One is Kenny Brown. He's with Waterford now. He's just, he's just strong. He's a big physical player like and you, you never you never get a second on the ball with him he's he's, he's very tough to mark like say and then the other is Andy Boyle off, who was with the dog who's gone to Preston now obviously yeah uh, he just seemed to read the game so well uh, it's just it's like he knew where your runs were going and stuff you know he'd always just be in the right place to block or tackle and he wasn't over physical or anything you know he wouldn't batter them bruise after playing against them but I think his understanding of the game position was just a step above anyone else who played against in the league so them yeah. two, I'd say, are the toughest opponents. Um, <laughs> uh, one fan asks, um, would you consider a Pats return before the end of your career? It's probably a Pats fan, was it? Yeah. Um, I imagine so. I, I didn't get any confirmation. Um, yeah, yeah I, I, no problem going back to Pats as a club. I had nothing against it. The club and the fans, they were fine. It just, I didn't see eye to eye with the manager at the time. So... If, if in the future and he's not the manager then yeah I'd have no problem returning to Pats but I don't think I'd play under him again at St Pats now because I feel I, I didn't get treated fairly so so yeah I would return to Pats but under certain circumstances okay. yeah um, favourite team to, uh, to play against besides Rovers <laughs> um, I, 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 it's a bit of a strange yeah I was going to say Rovers obviously but besides Rovers uh, I don't know it's always nice playing against your ex clubs, like you know, I look forward to the Pats games though. this year. Yeah, I have a fair few now, but um, I like playing against Cork and Dundalk because they're the biggest challenges, you know. You uh, Pats because I played against them, but no, I don't really have a I wouldn't say I have a favourite team, obviously, Rovers, but apart from Rovers, 
Nah, it's not favourites really. Um, your fa- your fa- who did you support as a kid and who was your favourite player growing up? Uh, Chelsea fan, diehard Chelsea fan. Favourite player has been Messi now for the past whatever, 10 years. But growing up as a Chelsea fan, I liked uh, Lampard and Drogba and Zola. Zola as well. So they'd be my favourite Chelsea players, but overall Messi. And um, guys, if anyone knows any Chelsea sports clubs in uh, Dublin, Dini's actually looking to. Uh, <laughs> you probably go have a few points with you. Even. I might do, yeah. yeah. Um, and then lastly, um, who was the best player you, you've played with in your career? Yeah, there's been a there's been a good few, obviously over the years. But I think the one that stands out is Shawnee Williams. We played him when I was a young lad at Sporting Finger. He was there at the time, and then I think he signed for I think it was MK Dons. He went there originally, and now he's at Millwall in the Championship. But yeah, it's just it's just class act as centre midfielder. Like he just couldn't get the ball off, and you could, you could think he was a step above everyone. And we had a good squad at the time, and but I think he always stood out. And uh, yeah, it's no surprise to me where he is now playing Championship week in week out. He was he was a class act there. Yeah. So did you did you ever did he ever like? Uh, teach anything because obviously you would have been a young lad. Uh, yeah, well, I was a young lad to be fair. He was a young lad as well at the time, so he, he, I think he's only what three years older than me or something. So, not really, just just had this thing about him. He was kind of influential without even knowing it, you know, that way. Like, yeah, he, yeah. he had an aura kind of about him around the dressing room, and he knew himself he was that good, you know. But he, I'm not saying that in a bad way, he never looked down on you or anything. But he, 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 he realised his ability. Yeah, I think he kind of knew he was going to play abroad and make a career out of it. And, and he did, so um, yeah, definitely I think I'd pick him as the best player I've ever played with, yeah. Okay, well that's all the questions we have there, uh, well they, they were the top ones anyway, um, <laughs> there was one actually I forgot, uh, yeah. one fan asks, do you prefer playing as a lone striker or with a partnership? Um, yeah, that's a tough one, I, I, I've always preferred uh, playing with a partner with two up front now. But like saying that this season we'd only I was a lone striker and I enjoyed it so I don't I don't know that's a tough question really yeah I think most teams it's nowadays it's when you when you have people around like wingers and the yeah they've been number ten because like say for example this season Wardy was mostly number ten he was basically playing up with me so even though I was a lone striker it was, it's like having two you know what I mean yeah so it's funny I think, what Hazard's kind of yeah I think most teams are doing it this this. These Rats days, you know, exactly, and Lukaku, you know what I mean? I think most teams are just kind of playing one striker, and like you said, wingers and attacking the fields around them, so, uh, no, we used to be two up top, but now I, I have no preference really, you know. It's just the same as Gamera? Yeah, pretty much, yeah, I think so, yeah. that's it. Well, that's great, Dinny, anyway, thanks very much for coming on the show. No water. Uh, special thanks to Murray's Bar on O'Connell Street for... Uh, having us here and uh, guys we're aiming for that 1000 subscribers before Christmas if you could uh, give us a subscribe we're at 870 at the moment so we don't need that much and Christmas is only in about three weeks time so if you haven't subscribed please do so now Dinny's even a subscriber now and all so uh, <laughs> check it out and uh, let us know your thoughts in the comments below thank you very much for watching Irish Football Fan TV